this evening we shall be looking at the dividends of the blessing part two like we saw last Wednesday our attempt is to understand the dividends or the byproducts of the blessing. Genesis chapter 12 verse 2 all the way to verse 3. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I'll bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed the Lord bless his word in Jesus name Last Tuesday, we made it clear that the blessing is a package. It's a package. The blessing is a product. We said that all encompassing package that is far beyond the acquisition of wealth. The blessing does not travel alone. The blessing travels accompanied. It is accompanied. It's like when you buy a car. You don't beg for the spare tire. You don't beg for a jack. There are many things. You don't beg for the ignition key. In the same manner, when you access the blessing of God, there are things that accompany the blessing. Number one we saw last week was divine wisdom. And then divine favor so the blessed is also the wise the blessed is also the favored then we saw divine strength or energy so the blessed is also the strong, the strong. The blessed is also the energetic. Having said that, what more does the blessing have to offer? In my opinion, the, the remaining two I'm to mention to me are the most important as far as this is concerned. Number four is divine presence. Divine presence. The presence of God accompanies the blessing of God. People who are blessed of God become privileged carriers of the presence of God. Example Abraham. By virtue of the blessing of God, Abraham experienced the presence of God in many ways. In Genesis chapter 17 verse 1, God spoke to Abraham the blessed when he was 90 years old and nine. And the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Walk before me. 
walk before me. Abraham, I got you covered. Abraham, remain in my presence. My blessing on you connects my presence to you. In Genesis chapter 19 verse 27, the Bible made it clear how Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Abraham the blessed was Abraham who stood in the presence of God. Example number two, Jacob by virtue of the blessing of God, experience the presence of God. Genesis chapter 28 from verse 12 all the way to verse 16. You remember the story of Jacob, how he dreamt and in the place called Bethel and a ladder set up to the, on the earth and the top of it reached the heaven and behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And then the Lord stood at the end of it and it should go all the way to verse 16. Jacob began to speak. Jacob awaked out of his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. Surely. How dreadful is this place? Surely this is the gate of heaven. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. The Lord is in this place. You cannot be blessed of God and be empty of his presence. You can't be blessed of God and be bankrupt of his presence. In my estimation, that presence is, is, is bigger than money, is bigger than wealth, is bigger than materials. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 32 verse 1, Jacob, when he was on his way back to his father's house, he went his way. And the angels of God met him, the host of heaven. That was celestial presence that Jacob enjoyed by virtue of the presence of God. In Genesis chapter 35 and in verse 5. The Bible said, and, and, and they journeyed, Jacob and his folks journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them, and they could not pursue the sons of Jacob. The terror of God was literally the presence of God. The presence of God carried the terror of God. And that presence of God that had the terror of God was round about Jacob. I prophesy to somebody tonight, from this moment forward, no devil shall be ignorant of the presence of God in your life. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. From this moment forward, no devil shall claim ignorance of the presence of God in your life. Shout, I believe it three times. Amen. That is why you must be blessed. That is why you must refuse to be cursed. That is why the ancestral demons of your family must not be able to afflict you. That is why the witchcraft curse must not prevail over your life. Somebody shout the Lord and say amen. That was Jacob. By the blessing of God, he experienced the presence of God. Third example was Joseph. By the blessing of God, Joseph was a comfortable carrier of the presence of God. Comfortable carrier of the presence of God. Genesis chapter 39 verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man in the house of his master the Egyptian and the Lord was with Joseph 
That was the credential of Joseph the blessed. In verse 21, Joseph was kept in prison, but the Lord was with Joseph. It doesn't matter who is not with you. If God is with you, you are too much. <laughs> but the Lord was with Joseph. What about David? Saul could have killed David since. But the blessing of God coupled with the lifestyle of worship made Joseph a comfortable carrier of the presence of God. First Samuel chapter 18 verse 12. First Samuel 18 verse 12. Look at this. And Saul was afraid of David because David carried an AK-47. What did your Bible say? And, the, and Saul was afraid of David because David had a general purpose machine gun. And Saul was afraid of David <laughs> because David carried a rocket propelled grenade. It's not in your Bible. Saul was afraid of David because David had an aircraft rifle. <laughs> and Saul was afraid of David because David had a Scud missile, a cruise missile, a Petra missile, a Tomahawk missile. <laughs> Why was Saul afraid of David? After today, they will fear you. That amen is still paralyzed. I said after today, they will fear you. You don't understand what I'm talking about. The witches and the wizards. You see, it is possible to have money and they still look down on you at times. Especially those who are occultically powerful. Say, is it money you are boasting? I will show you. But there is something you can carry. That the forces of hell must fear. It is called the presence of the Lord. And when you are blessed, you carry such a presence. And when you carry such a presence, the demons must quake. Overnight tonight, it will be confirmed that those who have been terrorizing you will begin to run for, to, for, their, for their life. Somebody shout the loud and say amen. Look at somebody by yourself. Say the Lord is with you and the devil shall quake. Give the Lord the praise. Take your seat. That is the preeminence of the presence of God above money above connection above certificate that's the preeminence that was first Samuel chapter 18 verse 12 if you look again at verse 14 of first Samuel chapter 18 he said and David behaved himself wisely in all his ways and the Lord was with him by virtue of that same blessing that was upon David. Now, this is it. The blessing is a guarantee of the presence of God. And the presence of God is the greatest asset of man under heaven. The blessing guarantees the presence of God. And the presence of God is the greatest possession of man under heaven. Is the highest you can have. No wonder God told the liver, I give you myself. Israel can get anything they want, but for you Levites, I give you myself. That's the presence of God. 
So number four is divine presence. And number five is divine direction. The blessing of the Lord is accompanied by the guidance of the Lord or the direction of the Lord. God will not bless you and abandon you unto frustration. God will not bless you and anoint you with confusion. <laughs> because God is not a waster. Any examples? Yes, Abraham. In fact, the journey of Abraham's blessing started with direction. Abraham, Genesis 12, 1 to 5. Get up out of your father's house to the land I will show you. That was where the, the, the journey started. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and thou shall be a blessing. Genesis chapter 12 and in verse 7. And the Lord appeared after blessing Abraham. He appeared unto Abraham with further direction. He said to him, Unto your seed will I give this land. And he builded an altar unto the Lord. That is, you are too blessed for me to leave you in confusion. In chapter 13 verse 14. And God, the Lord said to Abraham, after Lord was separated from him, lift your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward. All the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it unto thy seed forever. God was giving his blessed man direction. Then Genesis chapter 15 verse 1 to the end. Where you saw God cutting covenant with Abraham. After this thing the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision saying. Fear not Abraham. I am thy shield. An exceeding great reward. And so on. And so forth. We already read Genesis 17 verse 1. Where he told him to walk before me. And be thou perfect. And Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 to 3. He was giving him the direction. Of sacrificing his son. His only son Isaac. Because. He wanted to change his level. God has been liberal with his blessing to you. He will not be stingy with his direction towards you. If God has been liberal with his blessing towards a man, he will never be stingy with his direction towards such a man. Because the blessing without direction is disaster. The blessing without direction is destruction. He said the prosperity of fools will destroy them. Hallelujah. And then we saw God giving direction to Isaac. Hey, Genesis chapter 26 verse 1. And there was famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto Gerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Don't go down to Egypt. Remain in this land. The land I will tell you of. Stay here. I will be with you. I will bless you. For you and your seed, I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. And I will make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. And I will give unto your seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelled in Gerah. What a direction. If Isaac had gone down to Egypt... wouldn't have heard of Isaac. Am I communicating at all? Nobody would have heard of Isaac. 
that direction spared him and spared the lineage of Abraham. There are people who have gone to America that God did not send there at all. Their destiny arranged out of sight. There are people who started ministry that God didn't ask to start a church. Nobody asked them to start a church. Zeal does not equal a call. Functioning in miracle signs and wonders does not equal a call. He said, in my name you shall cast out devils. You shall lay hands on the sick. This sign shall follow them that believe. He didn't say this sign shall follow them that are called pastors. Any believer can walk in any sign without necessarily having a microphone as a preacher. I hear what I'm saying here. There is nothing that saves God's destiny like direction. Nothing secures the future like direction. If I didn't have direction, I would be, I would be wrongly married. And if I'm wrongly married, I, I would be wrongly ministered. <laughs> And terribly frustrated, miserable. Yesterday, we saw all manner of miracles, signs, and wonders. At the point, I was weeping, and I wasn't aware. My wife told me, he said, she saw my head bent on the on the man, and the tears was dropping like sweat on the man's head because I didn't lift my head. A pastor here was patting my back, and himself was crying. Later on, I saw the picture, and I saw my wife also. I realized that while she was on the altar there, she too was crying. So I said, what a unity of purpose, of assignment. Because if it is another wife, you are in trouble at home. What kind of man are you? Cry before everybody. Disgracing us all the time. Compose yourself until you leave the place. Then you can cry later. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? I felt at home. I said, oh, so she too was in partnership with because I wasn't aware what any other person was doing. Direction. Direction. God spoke to Isaac. Stay here. Because if you miss here, the blessing I have blessed you is wasted. Did you read the passage in Psalm 133? How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments as a dew of Hermon and as a dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing. So, there is a place for the commanded blessing. There, the Lord, there the Lord commanded blessing. If you are here, you are on your own. You don't understand what I'm talking about. Or maybe you don't want to understand. <laughs> you see that you don't understand. He said, for there, the Lord commanded the blessing. So for every blessing, there is the there. That is why direction is needed. That is why you need to know what God wants you to do with your life per time and where to be per time. That everybody's moving does not mean you move. That everybody's taking certain steps doesn't mean you take those steps. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, Isaac didn't move. And God blessed him. Then in Genesis, chapter 26, verse 24, all the way to verse 25, the Lord appeared unto him again. That was Isaac, the same night. 
and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bless you and multiply your seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there, Isaac's servant digged a well. And finally, or maybe before the final, we, hear, we see the example of Jacob. The blessing of God made Jacob a privileged recipient of divine direction. He received divine direction. After Laban dealt with him for 21 years, God appeared in Genesis chapter 31 verse 3. And he told Jacob, the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your fathers and to your kindred and I will be with you. Before he left, God showed him what to do in verse 10. In Genesis 31 verse 10 to 13. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up mine eyes. I saw in a dream and behold the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring streaked, speckled and grizzled. And the angel of God spake unto me in a dream saying Jacob and I said here am I. And he said lift up your eyes and see all the rams. This was in that dream where they showed him the technology. All the rams which leap upon the cattle are ring straight, speckled and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anoint the pillar, and where you vow a vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out of this land, and return unto the land of thy kindred. This was God specifically telling Jacob steps. The best move to make is to move with God. Is the move that is done in step with God. There are those who go ahead of God and those who go behind God. But the best step to take, the best move to make is moving in step with God. Someone say aloud, Amen. And finally, David, 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 the blessed of the Lord. Actually, you, you know of David so much, I, I don't even need to go into detail. The backbone of David's life was divine direction. First Samuel chapter 23 verse 2. And David inquired of the Lord, shall I go and smite the Philistines? And the Lord said, go. In verse 4, David inquired again of the Lord. And the Lord answered him and said, All right, go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into thy hand. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, when the Amalekites dealt with him in Ziklag, in verse 8, David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue after this trip? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recovered all. When David was anointed king, the Philistines came to look for him. In 2 Samuel chapter 5 verse 19, and David inquired of the Lord, shall I go up to the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thy hand. And then in verse 23, the Philistines came again, and David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said, you will not go up like you went before. But you shall fetch a compass behind them. And you shall come upon them against, over against the mulberry trees. And it shall come to pass if you hear the sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees. That then you shall bestir yourself. For then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a louder amen. If direction is the greatest asset of life, sorry, if divine presence is the greatest asset of life, then I will say that divine direction is
is doorway to destiny. The blessing of God guarantees divine direction. And divine direction ensures that you reach where you are meant to reach in life. So God blesses you and then directs you. So you can reach where he wants you to reach in life. Does that make sense? What is the use of a blessing that ends you in the wrong direction? Useless. What is the use of the blessing, for example, that ends a person in hellfire completely? Useless. Somebody say amen. I announced to someone here tonight, the last time you miss direction shall be the last forever. If it remains tomorrow for you to miss the step tonight, God will intercept and interrupt. Shout the loudest, amen. Shout the loudest, amen. There were interventions in the course of this project and dedication time that saved us money. I know of a particular one that would have saved us nothing less than a hundred million by direction, by help, by divine interruption. Yes. Not less. Could be more. By divine, just interrupt. No. This will be the way. And by moving that way, phew, money saved, time saved, effort saved, everything saved. By God interrupting. Somebody say loud, Amen. Take your seat. There is nobody who does not hear God. What did I say? Nobody. Nobody. Even when you didn't know God. How many of you have ever felt very bad? Before you became a Christian, you felt very bad when you did something wrong. You were, you, were, you were not a regular church goer yet. But you, you didn't feel at all. You did something wrong then. Even though later on, you, maybe you repented, you are sorry, but that badness was there. How many of you ever remember such a time? That conscience was the voice of God to you at that time. It made it clear to you that you took the wrong step did the wrong thing, said the wrong thing, discussed the wrong thing, made the wrong move, took the wrong money, acted in the wrong way. The Bible said that even those without God, in the book of Romans, without the law, their conscience bear, bore them witness, either accusing them or excusing them. They had the law of God written in their heart far back then, then how much more now? There are times where God spoke to you and it, you thought it was your mind talking and your thought, oh, a thought just came into my mind. It can only be your thought if you initiated it but if it came without your own initiation spontaneously that was not you talking did anybody hear what I just said take your seat in the presence of the Lord hear me Beloved brothers and sisters, God blesses you and the blessing first 
gives you wisdom, creative ideas, problem solving, solution provision, decision making. It gives you favor, open doors, opportunities. It gives you strength. It gives you energy. It gives you strength. It gives you energy. You are not weakened. You are not enfeebled. And then, your life is saturated, infiltrated, penetrated, percolated, animated, embodied, irrigated with divine presence. That is one of my sweetest enjoyments. This one, this number four. Divine presence. I do everything I can to, to be sure that that thing is present. Many of us, in the course of the service, you know how you feel God. How do you feel God? Can somebody tell me when, when, you, when the presence of God is heavy in a place, how do you feel it? It's not an exam. You are, you are confident. How do you feel? People have physical body signs. Let me tell you, that kind of thing that you, you feel once in a while, you can come to a point where in your bedroom you feel it and it is established. It's resident. Am I communicating? And you have divine direction. He said, this blessing I have given you is not to be wasted. It's not to be misdirected. So this is where to go and this is where to go. This is who to marry and this is who not to marry. This is where to do business and this is not where to do business. Direction. From today, it shall be evident in your life. Shout the loudest, amen. Lift your right and say, Father, I connect with the dividend of the blessing. I connect with divine wisdom, with divine favor. I connect with divine strength. I connect with divine presence, I connect with divine direction. Say the loudest, amen. I have two counsels. Number one, follow the way of the blessing. So you can exist in the realm of the blessing. Follow the way. The meaning of this statement is do all you can to experience the blessing of God. Follow the way of the blessing so you can exist in the realm of the blessing. Genesis 17, 1, Abraham already, God already told Abraham, he said, walk before me. And by Sunday, he expressed the ways of the blessing, the way of uprightness, the way of divine guidance, which is being repeated now. The way of absolute obedience. The way of giving. The way of praise and gratitude. The way of submission to prophetic authority. The way of scriptural light and insight. We saw all that on Sunday. Follow the way of the blessing. Follow the way of the blessing. And secondly, Just be 
dissatisfied with the material dividends of the blessing insist on the full package. Do not just be satisfied with the material dividends of the blessing. Insist on the full package. What, I, what do I mean? Oh, don't say, oh, praise God, I just bought a car. I just got a house. I'm paying tight and things are working. And then you are taking very, very disastrous decisions, no wisdom. And then your favor here and there is being denied. And then your strength is low. You are in weakness. And then the presence of God around you is scarce. And then you are in confusion, making the wrong moves all the time. No. Lord, I thank you for your blessing on my life. As I play my part in walking in the blessing, I thank you for wisdom. And I receive wisdom. And I receive favor. And I receive energy. And I thank you because I'm basking in your presence. And I refuse to misrule. I can't be a victim of confusion. Insist, insist on what the blessing has to offer. And somebody, you are stepping into the fullness of that blessing. Are you the one? Your amen will be loud. If you are the one, you stand up with a loud shout of amen.